to the Winsome Travels channel featuring Vasco as always my favorite partner in crime uh, today we are heading south we are heading to Charleston South Carolina it's also known as the holy city so we're gonna see how holy these people are I hope you had a great Christmas I hope you enjoyed time with family friends or whoever you spend it with this is going to be our first time in Charleston so we're going to be doing a lot of walking a lot of exploring just to get an idea of what the city is all about come along with us and i hope you enjoy all right let's do this Charlotte City Market and yeah we just got here and we're getting ready for a food tour so we're going to be hitting we're going to five or six restaurants I think for the food testing so I'm gonna keep you updated I'm gonna take you through this whole uh, tour and yeah I hope you'll enjoy it I know you're not here in person but I'm gonna be trying my best to tell you how the food tastes and I hope you'll like it and maybe you can check it out when you're, when you're here in Charleston our food tour was with Secret Food Tours, which is a tourism operator that has different food tours across major city across major cities in the world. Our first stop was Port of Call, which is a food hall that has several vendors selling various foods and drinks. At the first stop, we had Yucatan pork taco and street corn. I wasn't crazy about the street corn because I think it could have used more sourness and spices. But I like the pork taco because the pork wasn't super sweet. It was just the right amount of like sweetness. And it was a little bit dry, but it worked for that day, really. Most of our tour was in the French Quarter. After a fast tasting, we walked over to our second location that was located a few blocks away. Home to the Charleston City Market, the French Quarter is a great place to take a walk and take in the city's history that is apparent through the architecture, decor, and museums. Another option of exploring the city is going for uh, a horse carriage ride. This is a pretty common thing and as you walk in the streets, you'll see a lot of horses and in for tourists, you'd find it surprising but I guess the local people are used to it. It's a little bit weird going from one corner of the street and you can smell beignet, then going to the next corner of the street and smelling horse dung. So your senses will be a little bit confused, but I guess this comes with being in Charleston. Our second stop was the Oyster House, a seafood restaurant. Here we had shrimp crab soup, which is a pretty common thing in the South, shrimp and grits and puff puffs with pimento cheese. This was hands down the best shrimp and grits I've ever had. This place also makes really good cocktails and I couldn't pass trying their Charleston sweet tea. Another stop on our walk was for beignet wafers. However, the bakery was already closed as our tour was later in the evening. I would recommend that you book an earlier tour to ensure that you get a taste of all that the tour has to offer. Before our next stop, we walked through the Philadelphia Alley. Here you'll be submerged into Charleston's dark slavery past. You'll notice that there are handprints from nine to 10 year old slave children who made some of the bricks used on the alley. While celebrating its economic and cultural progression, Charleston does not seem to shun its past. With its ubiquitous museums and historical buildings and sites, the city seems to be screaming, I'm forging forward, but this is my past. That people's building over, however crazy people may have thought it looked in 1908, actually contained America's first elevator in use for a uh, Well, after arriving in Charleston, I could confirm that 
Apparently, Charleston is believed to be known as the holy city, not because the people there are super holy, but apparently it's because Charleston is historically a religious tolerant city. You will find like Protestant, Anglican, Catholic, and Jewish uh, places of worship there. And it has historically been like this. The city skyline has over 400 church steeples, and there are several religions that are practiced around town. After doing some good walking and learning about the city, we went back to Market Street for a second last tasting. So we went to Well Hung vineyard it's basically a winery plus a restaurant so here we had a sample of their brisket and which had like a glaze of coca-cola reductase uh, it, it was it seemed like a unique uh, concept I've never had such a meal before so it was just interesting to try it it wasn't one of my I mean the sweetness was a little bit too much it was kind of a dessert talking of dessert our last stop was an ice cream location on uh, King Street so we went to off track of truck ice cream and they had the best ice cream so if you like your ice cream less creamy then this is the place for you and the best part is they source their ingredients from the local area so you guarantee that you're more likely to have quality ice cream For the rest of our visit, we walked through cobblestone streets in the heart of the city and explored the Rainbow Row and also visited historic homes. We relaxed by the beautiful fountains and parks and enjoyed the scenic views along the harbor. As though we had not had enough from our food tour, we indulged more in the low country cuisine. We also visited the historic Charleston City Market and shopped for souvenirs and local crafts such as sweet grass baskets. Charleston is definitely a gem. You get the feeling of being in Europe and the Caribbean at the same time. It is the perfect getaway if you're looking for a place to unwind while learning about the country's history. You'll need two to three days to explore the city center. However, you'll need more days if you plan to visit the city's neighboring islands, Foley Beach, plantations like Middleton Place, Fort Sumter, among, among others. Whether you're a history buff, a foodie, or a beach lover, Charleston welcomes you with open arms and a promise of unforgettable experiences.